Welcome to another episode of Show Chap, and today we're going to be talking about the Detroit Red Wings because the Detroit Red Wings game yesterday against the Colorado Avalanche was a telltale sign of what this team is is slowly becoming. And I, I know for a lot of people, over the course of the last four or five years, you're wondering when this team will actually make the playoffs. I can tell you right now, I'm in full compliment to Terry to, I think this team is going to make the playoffs this year. And I think that any team that they play, they're going to be a tough out. They're going to be a tough team to play against, and no one's going to want to play them. Now, we're going to get to a lot of the stuff that we're I'm going to get to. The free agent signing is the guy who they signed off the scrap heap who was left for dead. A lot of people, you know, thought he would never – he's washed up or whatever. But what I'm trying to say right now is I've been doing the Red Alert podcast. It's been two, three years. I think we've. I think it's been a year that we've been doing the Red Alert podcast. We, we rebranded it. And, you know, the one thing I can say about this Red Wings rebuild was let's go back to when Ken Holland was the general manager, okay? The reason that this rebuild took as long as it did was because they never they, – they didn't get as many good draft picks as, as they should have. They, they, they didn't hit on any of the draft picks that they should have. You know, you can go down the list of Ken Holland's draft picks in the later years. wasn't good. Steve Eisman comes in. He's got to deal with the expansion draft. So there's he can't bring players to the NHL real quickly because they could be they could be taken in the expansion draft with Seattle coming. I think I think at that one point it was Vegas that came when he was here. I, I don't know if that was after or before. I'm losing track. But anyways, he had to, he had to prepare for both things to be true. And at that time. He made some decisions, and the draft picks of Mo Sider, the lottery ticket of Mo Sider, the lottery ticket of Lucas Raymond. Obviously, they weren't lottery tickets to him, but there are lottery tickets to the rest of the hockey world. I mean, go back to when Mo Sider was drafted. A lot of people were like, what? Who's Mo Sider? I didn't think he'd be drafted this high, and Steve Eisenman drafted him that high. And it just goes to show you that Steve Eisenman has made such a headwind on this rebuild. To where you know last year he went last year he went in the off season, and he did a damn good job because if you look at the players that he added last year in free agency, one hundred and sixty four points between all of them, one hundred sixty four points. That's a huge jump up. No matter how how you slice it, that's a huge jump up. And then you look at the guy that they added, you know to to in the middle of the, you know, the, the, at the start of the year with uh, Patrick Kane. And in the last five games, three goals, five assists, seven points, he's been on a tear. He's not, he's the same Patrick Kane that he was before the injury. And that was a chance that he took. And all in all, all in all, when you look at this team over the, the NHL, top 10 in goals for six, and in power play, their eighth, shooting percentage second, penalty kill eighth. This is a team that is making, you know, they're starting to make gain on what the Isaac plan originally was. And when you think about it like this, there's a lot of players that Isaac has drafted that are still in Grand Rapids, that are still in, you know, um, the juniors, still in the Swedish Elite Hockey League. Guys like Axel Sandin Pelica is getting rave reviews. Nate Danielson's getting rave reviews. You look at this list of players that are yet to make their de- debut. You got Nate Daniels and Trey Augustine at Michigan State, Axel Sandin Pelica, Sebastian Kosa, Kate Carter Mazer, William Wallander, Amadeus Sampardi, Cross Hannes, Shai Boom, Red Savage, and Dmitry Buchenikov. And you have a lot, a lot of guys that have not made their debut yet, but you're excited to see what they can become. Now, you know, Buchenikov, he's a couple, he's a couple years away because of the Russia. Um, you know, Nate Danielson, he, we, we don't know what the, the track record that Nate Danielson could be on. I mean, even Sandine Pelica, like, they're they're giving him rave reviews of he can be Victor Hedman or he could be at the lowest Eric Carlson. You know, this is what the Iser plan was. Is this, this is what it was intended to be. You weren't intended to be good early in the Iser plan. You weren't. You, you had to be bad. Rebuilds are horrible. They're tough. They're lean, and if you're not a you know if you're not a real Rebbings fan or you're you're a, a, a 
you know, occasional rubbings fan and you dip your toes in the water when they're good, you probably watched the product and said, oh my God, they're so far away. But there's a method to the madness that Steve Eisenman had. The madness was, let's get young, let's draft really, really well, let's add free agents when we, we when we feel like we're close, you know, with the Dylan Larkins, Alex Debrinkit, you traded for in the offseason. Like, you, you made some moves to help you out because last year you were almost up in the playoffs and then you took that nosedive near the end of February. We're in, at the end of the February and it looks like the Red Wings are flying high right now. So this Detroit Red Wings team, if they keep the same track record they have uh, since since January 1st, they're going to make the playoffs. And the way that they're playing right now is exactly what Steve Eisenman intended this team to be. Tough, gritty, uh, you know, skilled, fast, good skating, all that stuff. And that's what wins you hockey games in the NHL. And like if you look at the four lines, like there's they're deep on the all four lines, and they have guys in Grand Rapids like Simon Evanson, like Jonathan Bergeron, you know who who might have he might have asked for a trade. Those are all guys that should be on the NHL roster, but I don't think Steve Eiserman and like I don't think he thought they would be on the roster right now. But look, what Eiserman has done since he's been here is all he's done is make the prospect pool bigger and better. He's got he's hit some lottery tickets like Mo Sider, like Lucas Raymond. And I think that if you look at some of the lists that I showed you earlier, I think you have two goalies that could potentially be franchise goalies in Augustine and Kosa. Uh, you look at Danielson, you look at Pel- Pel- Pelica, you look at Mazer, who could be a you know maybe a second liner, third liner, a, a guy who can put the puck in the net, you know. Wallander, Lombardi, Savage is doing a pretty damn good job, and he might be a gritty fourth liner in the future. But these are all guys that have not made their debut. Obviously, Simon Evanson and Marco Casper have made their debut already, so you're not counting them. You're not counting Bergeron. You're you're not that. Those are guys that have made their debut. The prospect pool is deep for the Detroit Red Wings, and this is what Eisman intended it to be. Because now, now that they're getting close to the the playoffs, right? Now that they're getting close to the playoffs, he can, at the trade deadline, he can make that bold move because he does have the prospects to, if if he sells off a Bergeron, if he sells off, you know, a Simon Evanson or, or he sells off someone on the roster for a defenseman, I mean, this is, this is, this is right up Steve Eisenman's alley. And I think they, you know, a lot of people were talking about, you know, he should make trades, he should make free agency early in the rebuild. And it wasn't time. Now it's time to make that move. And I think he's going to make that move. If if we're going to be completely honest with each other, I think Steve Eisenman with the acquisition of Patrick Kane, with the acquisition of a lot of the free agents that he has, you know, it, he signed Petrie, you know, Shara, you know, or last year. And then, you know, you have Patrick Kane, you have Brong, you have guys all over the roster that Justin Hole, you know, Oli Mata, like, this this team does need a defenseman, but I think that this I think what Steve Eisenman is going to go do, he's going to make a trade. He's going to make a big move, and I think that a big move is coming because that's what the Eisenman plan set up early in the rebuild. If you weren't here, it was obviously lean, but now the Detroit Red Wings are growing into the team that they ultimately are going to become, and that's Stanley Cup contenders for years to come. It's not just a one year wonder. He built this for the long term. That's the key with this with uh, Steve Eisenman and the Eisenman plan. It was building for the long term. That's it, and that's where you're gonna you're gonna go now. And we're gonna and, and if you're new to the channel, more Rebbings content's coming. So stay tuned to that. Um, and if you're a Detroit sports fan, we're gonna give you Detroit sports content: Tigers, Lions, Pistons, Rebbings, Michigan, Michigan State, all year long. So subscribe to the channel. We'll give you it all. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.